Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and today I'm going to be reviewing Detective City of Angels from Van Ryder Games. Detective City of Angels is played across this awesome map of LA. No matter what mode you choose to play, your detective or detectives will be moving all across the city, searching different locations, and attempting to gather enough information about a case to solve it. I don't want to take any materials out because I don't want to spoil anything, but every case that you play is going to have several pieces of information that are on cards. Some will be revealed at the very beginning of the game. Some will be uncovered as you learn more about a given case. As you learn information, you're going to take notes on this detective sheet. So as you gather more information about what's on the cards, you can also question suspects about those cards. So if suspect one, might know something about card G that I just uncovered, I can go and ask him or her about it. Eventually, in most cases, you're going to be looking for the suspect, the weapon, and the motive in order to solve the case. However, there are some that have special surprises that I'll leave you to discover for yourself. Each time you play, you'll choose a detective. I'm particularly partial to this one who looks like Carmen Sandiego. You're also going to get a detective board. This is the competitive side. So when you're playing a competitive version of the game, you can move, question suspects, search locations, search suspects, and take kickback. So analyzing kickback actions gets you money, and what you need money for in the game is to bribe. So when other people question suspects, you can pay money in order to have a snitch listen in on the conversation for you, or you can pay money to bribe police stations to see what information other people have uncovered. Because in the competitive version of the game, nobody sees what you have right away. They have to fight you for it. And it's not just detectives fighting each other. There's a player called the Chisel who essentially runs the game and chooses responses for the suspects to give you. That's right, they get to choose responses because suspects who are questioned in this game can lie. Depending on whether you think an answer is valid or not, you can choose to challenge. If you challenge successfully, you gain influence over that suspect and can force the truth out of them in the future. However, if you're wrong, it could lead to some bad consequences for you later in the game because the Chisel gets influence over you. In the sleuth version of the game, which is the cooperative or solo version, there is a reduced set of actions because there is no chisel to play against. You're gonna play against the sleuth book instead. In this case, you can just move, question, search location, and search suspect. However, you can still challenge suspects who give you fishy answers when you check them in the sleuth book. In this case, if you're wrong, you accrue stress tokens, which makes you need to solve the case faster before you totally stress out and lose the game. The way they've handled the sleuth casebook in this game is actually really nice. Basically, this book contains a lot of numbered passages that are responses that the chisel can give you in the game, or the text from search cards that you would find from searching a location if you're playing multiplayer. For the solo game, what you get is this grid. So what these question grids do is if, say, you want to question Dom DiCaprio, one of the suspects, about card F, you're going to turn to paragraph 124 in the sleuth book. Similarly, if you want to search a location, you are given several numbers that you can turn to depending on which location you choose to search. You also get numbers for the suspects should you choose to have a look through their pockets. Overall, what's extremely appealing about Detective City of Angels is that the cases work really well, but they're also very challenging, and it can be really difficult to figure out which bits of evidence are red herrings, figure out who's telling the truth, and generally make sure that you're not led on a wild goose chase across the city while the real culprit gets away. So I'm just gonna say straight off, I really, really like Detective. Atmospherically, it is so good. The theme is really, present in all aspects of the game. There's even a glossary of fun noir terms that you can try out when you play with your friends, which doesn't happen in the solo mode, but I've played this both solo and multiplayer many times and had a good experience every time. I'm also impressed by how good the puzzles in the game really are. Unlike most mystery games, you know, I'm a big fan of Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective as well, for example. Um, Detective City of Angels is amazing because it's a game that can misdirect you or that can lie to you. And attempting to read the responses from your suspects in the game and read into those responses and figure out if you believe them adds this whole new layer of challenge and interest and just connection to the game that your normal detective puzzle can't quite do for you. I'm also really impressed with how well constructed the puzzles are. 
Having solved all cases in the base box at this point, I'm ready to move on to the expansions, and I'm just really impressed with the nine cases that I've played so far. I found that even if I'd gotten sidetracked during the game, the solutions made a lot of sense. All the little false leads and red herrings were so fun to deal with and try to suss out, and I really did feel like I was solving a 1940s LA mystery when I played. As a solo player, I'm also really happy with how the game book worked. The Sleuth Casebook did a really, really good job of offering plausible responses that I could decide whether to challenge when I was questioning suspects. And I also thought that the way to search locations was very smooth, it was very nicely done, and it made running cases by myself to play by myself a very easy experience that let me concentrate on the puzzle at hand and not worry so much about upkeep of the game. The only concern I have about Detective City of Angels is that because it's a detective game, you can only play each case one time, which means that how you play the cases really matters. I have played all three roles in this game, so I have played it solo and gone against the Sleuth Casebook, I have played as a detective with someone else chiseling, and I have played as the chisel and been the person who runs the game for everybody else. And I feel like my default role for the most part is to solve the case by myself and then turn around and chisel and it's been a really satisfying experience. I both enjoy solving the cases and I enjoy introducing other people to the game and making sure that other people have a good time while also giving them a bit of a run for their money. That said, I think the most fun way to play might actually be as a detective in the multiplayer competitive mode. Solo is very good and I have no complaints about its quality, but there's something really special about knowing that somebody knows something that you don't, feeling frustrated about it, trying to bribe, trying to hoard information that other people don't have, trying to listen in as other people question suspects, which is something that you can do in multiplayer. All of those extra elements really gives the game an extra oomph that I think is delightful and that you can can't really replicate with solo. So while Detective City of Angels is excellent as a solo game, I have no complaints about it. I do think that if you can play as a detective with a group, that you should for at least a few cases to see if it's for you. That said, as a solo game, especially if just playing it by yourself is your cup of tea, I highly recommend Detective City of Angels. I'm giving it an absolute 9 out of 10. Dice Tower Seal of Excellence. It's wonderful. So if detective games are your sort of thing, definitely do not miss this one. Happy gaming. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.